And one takeaway from this event is um, if you want uh, to get more out of a politician so they can't use the, the press for time thing, I guess the ideal place to uh, try to get them is on the way into the event or uh, try and get them as soon as the event is, uh, as soon as that official portion of the event had ended, uh, I could have been like the first person to try and go up and talk to him. But there was a lot of people with like kids and families that wanted to be, uh, you know, shaking hands and being all happy. And I didn't want to be throwing hardballs uh, as there's all these like kids wanting to shake someone's hand and stuff. So, I mean, if, if this was like uh, Obama or Hillary Clinton or one of these bigwigs, I probably wouldn't care. But I consider this much more of a... Uh, this, uh, Mr. Ben Carson, I consider him much more of a, uh, I don't know, like a lower tier candidate. Um, somebody who's not experienced with politics. Um, somebody who hasn't voted for these bad things. Like he has, I may not like his ideas, but he's not somebody that's actually out there um, voting in these bad policies like Clinton and Obama and authorizing drone strikes and all those terrible things. Um, I found his position, he, he sounds like he's a little bit of a fear monger with the, the terrorist thing. He was like, we gotta seal the borders so that um, jihadists don't get in and they're so dangerous they just want to cut off your head and stuff. I, I don't think there's a realistic fear of, of those sorts of things here in the United States. I think if there were open borders, I'm not afraid that tomorrow that a bunch of impoverished uh, people from the Middle East are gonna find means to get here and kill a bunch of people in mass. Besides, we got guns, and lots of really cool weapons that aren't guns that people can defend themselves with. That does not concern me. We don't need a military on the borders, because as you know, um, the fence that's big enough to keep them out is big enough to keep you in, and every country that has ever put up a fence, it's always in the name of keeping some foreign terror out, and it always, not always, but it almost always eventually becomes a means to keep people in. And um, it's, it's very true, it's very sad. Uh, Berlin Wall, it was to keep the uh, capitalists out, but really it was to keep the people in, you know? It works both ways. So that's why uh, free people don't live behind walls. I mean, you could have walls at your house, obviously. You're behind walls there, but um, I, don't, I don't need a fence around my yard. I don't need to live in a gated community. And I definitely don't need somebody thousands of miles away from me, or hundreds of miles away in the case of the New Hampshire border, setting up a fence around the name of this country or whatever. Um, it's ludicrous. The natural borders of the mountains and the grass and the rivers and the sky. I don't, well, not so much the sky, but <clears throat> the ocean is a border. I'm not afraid that somebody's necessarily going to cross it and hurt me. Um, so yeah, these are all things to consider, I guess. Uh, I like some of his rhetoric, but I like a lot of politicians' rhetoric, and that's why it's rhetoric. Um, about the everybody should consider themselves uh, just Americans rather than all these divisions. In fact, I actually don't like that rhetoric. I like the, the rhetoric better of we're all human beings. Um, but, you know, a, a politician's got to appeal to their uh, national uh, constituency. So I, I understand where he's coming from with that. Um, so, yeah, that's a little wrap-up and, and takeaways from a, a little half-hour meeting with Ben Carson. He showed up a little late. He stayed a little late. Um, and now i got to tend to some business. Adios.